The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Look at all the joints you have. They're all created so we can move and do things. Huh? <laughs> Just lay with a remote control in your hand. Go. feel so bad. Making good habits and breaking bad habits. Last night I laid a, I believe, a pretty good solid foundation and I really can't go back over much of that just because of time. But I simply want to say that we all have habits. 40%, they say, as much as 40% of what we do is done strictly out of habit. That means we don't even realize half the time we're doing it. We just do it because we've done it so much that it's become part of us. Habits are made through repetition and habits can be broken through repetition. If you repetitiously do something, you get a habit of doing it. If you, if you repetitiously don't do something, then you can get the habit of not doing it. When you're used to it, you'll miss it when you first stop doing it but then after a while, it wouldn't even be comfortable to do it again. However, we don't want to focus on bad habits. I'm sure when I said I'm preaching on making good habits, right away you all thought of all the bad habits that you have. I don't even want you to focus on your bad habits. I want you to focus on making good habits. Because I believe if we make enough good habits, there won't be any room in our life for the bad habits. Last night I just talked about the first habit in my book, and there's 14 in here, 14 things that we talk about in the book. And the first one was making the God habit. Well, I said that if you spend regular quality fellowship time with God and you are really educated in the Word of God, that in itself will get rid of a large majority of your other habits. How many of you believe that? That spending time with God really changes things in your life. And so we're going to continue to look at these habits. Two of our foundational scriptures are Romans 12, 21. We overcome evil with good. We overcome evil with good, so we can overcome bad habits by simply making good habits. And the other one was, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh, which is Galatians 5, 16. Now, let's look at Romans 5, 5, because the first thing that we want to talk about today for just a few minutes is thoughts and words. The habit of thinking right and speaking right. I'm not going to say a lot about this because... In every message I preach, I end up saying something about thoughts and words. However, I can't have a book like this and not say anything about it. So you're about to hear a little bit more about thoughts and words. It's Romans 8, 5. I'm sorry, guys. I gave you the wrong one. Aren't our guys in the back good trying to keep up with us? Okay, now look at this scripture. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. And I'd like you to put that back up from the beginning and let me read it to you a different way. For those who have bad habits are controlled and set their minds on those bad habits. Those who have good habits are controlled by them because they have set their mind on those good habits. Where the mind goes... The man follows. Your thoughts always precede your actions. You cannot change a bad habit if you keep bad thinking. You cannot make a good habit if you keep bad thinking. You have to first believe that you can do a thing, renew your mind in that area. The more you think about it, the more you talk about it, the better it's going to be. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, If you then been raised with Christ... To a new life. How many of you believe you've been raised with Christ to a new life? It says, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, I love it. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on things upon the earth. Now, let me just simply say this to you. God has given you and me an unbelievable gift 
in the mind. It, it's just, even scientifically, it's amazing how little of our mind we use and what it's capable of and how many functions it provides every single solitary day. Your mind is a, a phenomenal gift from God. And God has all, also given us this ability that if we really make our minds up that we're going to do something, to be honest, it's pretty much all over after that because you really can do just about anything that you make your mind up that you're going to do. That's why when people say, well, you know, I just, um, I, I, I can't, I can't exercise. Now don't get mad at me, but the truth is you don't want to. <laughs> well, I, I, just, I just can't get out of debt. It's too big of a problem in my life. Well, the truth is, is you don't want to pay the price to undo the mess that you, can I go there? The mess that you made. Now, yes, I know there are always unfortunate circumstances. Things can happen to people that were beyond their control. I give you that. There's no doubt about that. But we're just going to say that we're going to talk about our part. And if we live riotously on one end, then we've always got to pay the price on the other end. Dave and I got in debt in the early years of our life using credit cards. And we decided we were going to get out of debt. And I mean, we went long time we couldn't buy hardly anything and it's not pleasant when you do that but it sure is pleasant when you're no longer in debt people say i don't have i can't uh, i just i want to spend time with god i want to get up and pray but i just don't have the time now look at me let me tell you something you have the same amount of time that everybody else does we all get the same amount we all get 24 hours a day and it's totally up to you what you do with it so if you don't have time to spend with God, then you need to just get rid of something else in your life because nothing else is going to work if you don't put God first. So now when I say, if you make your mind up to something, nothing can stop you, I believe that that's a gift that God has given you. You know, there was even one place in, in the Bible where God had to come down and confuse their languages because they had all gotten into agreement. And he said, we're going to have to do something here because they're trying to build a tower to heaven. And there's so many of them that if they imagine that they can do this, they're going to end up doing it. So that in itself tells me that it is amazing what we can do if we just simply will say, I believe with God's help that I can do this. I have set my mind and I'm not going to change it. The problem that we have is we make our mind up and we change it. And then we make our mind up and we change it. And then we make our mind up and the devil talks us out of it. And we make our mind up and then it's too hard. We have to make our mind up and not change it. So if you set your mind for victory, you will have victory. I'm sure you're familiar with 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Cast down wrong imaginations and every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The devil will put thoughts in our mind that are against the word of God and the Bible tells us that we're to cast them down. Now, a little something about words. Let's look at Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. I love this. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the consequences of his words he must be satisfied whether good or evil. Uh-oh. We better leave that up there a minute because I don't know if you got it. And... <laughs> Words have consequences. You know why? Because words are containers for power. I have water in this glass, but I could put mud in it if I wanted to. Well, your words are containers, and what you put in them is entirely up to you, but you will get the consequences of those words. Well, you guys are excited today about my great message. <laughs> the power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death is in the tongue. One more. Idle words leak power. That's what Watchman Nee said. Idle words leak power. Look at 2 Timothy 2.16. But avoid all empty, vain, useless, idle talk, for it will lead to more and more ungodliness. Now, let me just give you an example of idle talk. Matter of fact, if you really just would take a whole day and zip your lip and just listen <laughs> to people, people say some of the stupidest things. <laughs> I mean, things that just make absolutely no sense at all. 
Like people will say to me, I get this all the time, Joyce, I love you to death. I'm like, don't love me to death, love me to life. I'm working real hard to try to have a life, not dying. Or we say, this is just killing me, just killing me. We talk so much about death, people talk more about death than they do life. Idle talk, this is just so hard. I don't think I can do this. I'll never change. I'm so stupid. I'll never lose weight. I'll never have a, I'll never be out of debt. I'll never have a good job. I'll never get that promotion. Why in the world, if you're gonna spend your time talking, don't you, why don't you say something that's gonna help you? Instead of saying something that's gonna hurt you and just make you feel worse and worse and worse all the time. Okay, you know why? Habit. We just get in the habit of just saying what everybody else says, or we just get in the habit of just saying wh whatever comes up. You know, all the enemy really has to do is just assign a little demon to be about right here and just suggest thoughts to you and they just go, right in your head and right out your mouth, right in your head and right out your mouth. <laughs> All day long. Well, God wants us to say no to that and he wants us to be full of the word and then he wants it to come up out of here out of our mouth, out of here out of our mouth. So are you doing this or this? <laughs> Maybe when somebody says, what did you learn today? You could say, no more of this and a lot of this. <laughs> Come on, I'll give you a sermon right there. No more of this and a lot of this. We, you don't just say what you feel. You say what truth is. Your words and your thoughts will precede all of your actions. So now we're gonna talk about the habit of being decisive. Mm. How many of you have a tendency to have a difficult time making decisions? How many of you make decisions too fast? That's me. Well, some people make them too fast, some make them too slow, and some don't make them at all. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt said, in any, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing, and the worst thing you can do is nothing. And I like that. Obviously, the best thing to do is the right thing. He's actually saying that you're better off to do the wrong thing than to do nothing. And that's why most people don't do anything because they're afraid of doing the wrong thing. You say, well, why would it be better to do the wrong thing than to do nothing? Because if you're doing nothing, it's because you don't know what's right or wrong, and sometimes the only way you can find out is to do something and see if it works or not. Now, I'm not suggesting that you make foolish decisions or decisions too quick without giving thought to it. We obviously need to think about what we're doing. But once you've prayed, thought about something, considered your options, what are you gonna do if you don't make a decision? The worst, most tormenting place in the world to be is an indecision. Knowing that you have to make a decision and just absolutely not knowing what to do. And I realize there are some of you here today that you maybe are in a situation and, and you really don't know what to do. Well, you keep praying for a little bit and I believe God will show you, but eventually you know what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to try something. <laughs> oh. What if it don't work? What if it does? And you know what? If you take one little baby step, don't get yourself in too much trouble. You see if God opens that door, and it's like, oh, you missed it. <laughs> I might be onto something here. Amen? Now, if you do this and you get your toe stomped on, then be smart enough to pull it back. Don't just keep going in a wrong direction when nothing is working out. 